What is going on people, Triple M back again with another video and today I would like to talk about the goalless draw between Morocco and Croatia. Despite it not being the most entertaining game by a long shot at the World Cup, I genuinely think it was a fascinating tactical battle between two teams that ultimately just cancelled each other out and I think what's more impressive is the performance that Morocco put in when you consider the disparity in terms of individual quality between these two teams, right? You look at that Croatia side, Kovacic, Brozovic, Modric, you don't need to say any more. You don't even need to mention Perisic. You don't even need to mention any other player from Croatia. That midfield three alone should justify Croatia being the favourites in this game and being expected by the vast majority of football fans to win this game. But to the contraire, they were completely nullified by Morocco. I mean, when Croatia were trying to play out from the back, Morocco didn't allow them. They would oftentimes, in this position here, whenever the ball would get to Lovren or would get to Vardiol on the other side, they would often force Croatia to go through the middle because um, Bufal and Ziyech would mark the fullbacks on opposite flanks and force Croatia to play this pass into Brozovic. Now, Brozovic had to go into a lot of weird pockets uh, of space to try and receive the ball from the back four and make sure that they always had that extra passing option. And he did a great job for that, of that. I think Brozovic was Croatia's most active midfielder and he was involved in Croatia's play. Now, he didn't play any line-breaking passes. He didn't play any passes that led to significant opportunities that I can remember, at least not that many. But what he did was be very tight Heidi on the ball and always offer that safety net for Lovren and, and Vardiel, which is very important for a deep-lying midfielder and, and somebody who's supposed to be the anchor of the team. But every time the ball would get up to Brozovic and he would try spray the ball out wide, whether it's to Perisic, whether it's to Vlasic, or even to Modric or, or Kovacic to try play it up the field, Morocco was so quick. Morocco was so quick to, 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 to like pressure and make sure that Modric or Kovacic just didn't have the space. They were caught in these really weird tight angles. And for the most part, I think Croatia did a good job of playing out from tight spaces today, but they weren't able to make it lead to anything. So they would play their way out of tight spaces, but oftentimes it was a back pass or a sideways pass. It was never a forward pass. It was never something that caught Morocco napping, basically. And, and that's where they really struggled. Whenever Croatia were on the halfway line and looking to attack, Morocco would deploy this very compact and very narrow 4-3-3, where they would have a flat back four, they would have three midfielders here, basically cutting the lines between Brozovic and Modric and Kovacic, and basically forcing Croatia to play this long ball to Sosa, or play this long ball out to Perisic, or recycle it through the back four. Equally, when the ball would go to the other side, they would do the exact same thing. They would completely leave the opposite fullback or the opposite wing back completely unmarked and completely open and they're saying fine you can play this ball good luck play this ball and then what you're going to play this ball and then what you don't have any quick wingers you don't have any uh, uh, quick number nine what are you going to do play a ball over the top good luck let's see who can win aerial duels that's basically what morocco did today they said good luck we're going to leave that flank over there and we're going to make sure in this area of the pitch we're compact we're tight and we're going to make sure that modric and kovacic cannot play football so much so that Modric oftentimes when he was involved had to go really far up the pitch or drop really deep he couldn't play in the middle of the park as freely as he wanted and you could say the same about Kovacic and it was excellent it was genius by Morocco because they knew if they played uh, a slightly higher line to make sure that the distribution from the goalkeeper to Croatia's back four wasn't good they wouldn't get punished in behind so they were able to sit high up the pitch try stop Croatia and if Croatia played between the lines they would drop off very calmly and very quickly and then just sit in their narrow 4-3-3 from side to side and basically shift and usually what happens with the low block is when the team shifts to one side you want to play a quick diagonal ball to the other side and exploit the open space but again Croatia don't have that pace they don't have that blistering pace on either side to take advantage of that open space and that's the problem so Morocco knew that and they very much forced Croatia out into their discomfort zone, right? They forced Croatia out of their comfort and basically said, we're going to force you to play long balls even though you don't have anyone who can receive those long balls and then use their pace and agility to get past, uh, uh, to get into that open space. And it was absolutely genius if you ask me. Now, in terms of individual performances, it was hard to really say who was man of the match there. It was really hard. Because on Croatia's side, I think a lot of the performances were flat. Like I said, I thought Brozovic was really okay today. He was really tidy and probably the best midfielder of the lot, which is a surprise, considering he's a midfield uh, three with Modric and Kovacic. I would say Lovren and Vardiol probably had better games. Um, and, and, and equally on the side of Morocco, I would say that Agard and Sias, the captain of uh, Morocco, I hope I'm pronouncing those names correctly, and if I'm not, I really apologize, those were probably the best players on the pitch. Both pairs of centre-backs for either team. You could probably throw Hakimi in there. You could probably throw uh, Jeronovic in there from Croatia. But both sets of defenders 
probably were candidates for man of the match. Both sets of midfielders, not really. I thought Amrabat was okay for uh, for Morocco, but he gave away the ball cheaply a couple of times. I vividly remember him giving away the ball to Luka Modric, and unfortunately, Croatia just didn't have the numbers for it to capitalize on the disorganized Morocco defense and really put them to bed. If they did, that story could have been uh, very, very different today. But if bots and maybes don't count in the world of football, and uh, such is the nature of, of life at the World Cup. Honestly, I'm proud of Morocco, man. As an African, I think it's amazing to see a team like Morocco take the fight to Croatia, who, by the way, recently beat Denmark home and away. They beat France in Paris, right? They beat France away from home. They made a World Cup final not so long ago. They made a World Cup semi-final before that, right? So this is a team that's capable of really going deep into tournaments and making life difficult for a lot of teams that would otherwise be considered the favorites against them. And now they're coming up against a Morocco team and Morocco have done to them what they've done to others. Really, really special. Really, really special. Passion desire, hard work, tracking down, things that have nothing to do with talent and skill. I always say this on my channel, you have to make sure that if you're coming up against a better opposition, the things that have nothing to do with skill or talent, you are taking care of and the rest will take care of itself. Because at the end of the day, if you make a mistake, if you give away the ball, if you're not tracking your runner, if you're not working extremely hard, then you can't blame it on individual quality. You can't say, well, Croatia were the better team. That's why they won. No, they won because you were lazy and because you gave yourself an excuse before the game had even started and basically gave yourself an easy way out. And that's a loser attitude. You've got to come to the game with a fighting mentality and say, you know what, they might be the better players, they might be technically better than us, but we're better in terms of fight, we're better in terms of men mentality, we're better in terms of the things that have nothing to do with actual technique, but more to do with the mental side of the game, and we're going to get stuck in, and we're going to try really hard. Now, Morocco, as much as they defended very well, they really struggled to get up the other end, and that's credit to Croatia, because Croatia also defended well. So again, this was a this was a battle between two teams who just cancelled each other out, and that's why the game ended goalless. Um, Croatia had most of the ball, they just couldn't do anything with it, and Morocco, the few times they did get the ball, they tried to hit Croatia on the break, but again, Croatia were just organised well enough to prevent anything from happening, and uh, that's why the game ended 0-0. Um, either way, I'm very proud of, of, of Morocco more than anything. People will probably be very disappointed with Croatia's performance, especially considering that midfield three, the fact that they were unable to break down a very stubborn Moroccan defense. And uh, yeah, I've got nothing else to say, people. Leave a like on the video if you want to support the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And of course, leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on the World Cup so far. I know it's been a very weird World Cup, but me personally, I refuse to discuss the politics of the World Cup for two reasons. One... I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be somebody who complains about Qatar, but then when there's other human rights issues in other parts of the world that have also hosted World Cups, I don't say anything. And number two, I feel like a lot of people who are complaining about the human rights issues are virtue signaling, especially people who are literally getting paid to go to Qatar and are getting fed very handsomely. They're sitting in Qatar, watching the World Cup in Qatar, whilst protesting the World Cup in Qatar. Make it make sense. If you're going to protest something, surely you're going to protest it properly and not engage. It's like Manchester United fans who claim to be glazers out, but they pump money into the club and are actively part of the problem. Same thing. It's like if somebody says Apple is the worst company in the world, they exploit human rights, but they walk around with an Apple device in their hand. It makes no sense. It's virtue signaling, in my humble opinion, and I don't want any part of it. I'm just here for the football, and if you want to, you know, protest the World Cup, I respect your decision, man. Just because we disagree doesn't mean we can't respect each other as human beings, and, and that's my two cents on it. I won't lie. I wasn't feeling this World Cup for the first few games, but after that Saudi Arabia-Argentina game, I, th I think I'm feeling it. The World Cup fever has got me fully.